أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يدلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده رسول صلى الله عليه وسلم يا أيها الذين آمنوا تقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس تقوا ربكم والذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا تقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطيع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وعليكم السلام ورحمة الله وبركاته My beloved brothers and respected sisters don't be afraid the speech is not going to be in Arabic but that is how the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, one of the ways he taught us to open any speech. As the brother said, in these few minutes that are given to me today, and also after that, I have another appointment. These few minutes that bring us a few minutes closer to our graves, I would like to advise first and foremost myself, and after that, each of you who listens and understands my words, to advise you on a few points concerning the month that's coming up and I'm not going to speak about the rules and regulation of fasting and what breaking your fasting and whatnot these are things that we well, you yeah, need the information about such things is easily accessible and each and every Muslim should know about these things and every year again I advise you to look up this information and refresh your memory to what breaks your fast and whatnot and I'm not going to speak about these things today First of all, I would like to congratulate each and every one of you. Not with your fancy car or your high diplomas or whatever you, status you attain in this dunya, but I would like to first and foremost congratulate you with the fact that you are sitting here as a Muslim, listening to these words in a place of worship about which the Prophet wasallam said, Verily, the most beloved places on the face of the earth are its masajid, the mosques, the masjids. And you're sitting here as a Muslim, and every day again you should realize that this is a blessing. You should not take this for granted just because you were born in a Muslim family. And when you say, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, at least 17 times per day in your salah, you should say this from the bottom of your heart. Congratulations, my brother. Congratulations, my sister, for being of the Ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And this is not something that you should take for granted because about 75% of the world population is not a part of this Ummah. They are from the Buddhists and the Hindus and the other, other types of Mushrikeen and Kuffar. Allah Ta'ala, He says, for example, in His book in which there is no doubt, وَمَنْ يَبْتَغِ غَيْرَ الْإِسْلَامِ دِينًا فَلَنْ يُقْبَلَ مِنْ وَهُوَ فِي الْآخِرَةِ مِنَ الْخَاسِرِينَ and whoever wishes any other deen than the deen of Islam, any other way of living than the deen of Islam, it will not be accepted from him. No matter how good the intention is, it will not be accepted for him. And in the hereafter, the life in which we believe after this life, he will be from the losers. You can be a loser in this life. And that will only be a test and a, a, a source of reward for the Muslim. But being a loser in the hereafter, that's the real loss. That's the real loss. People might laugh at you for being a loser in this dunya in their eyes. Because, for example, economically you're not that strong. But being a loser in the hereafter, that's the real loss. And these losers are the ones who chose another way of living than the way of Islam. And Allah Ta'ala says, a few months before the Prophet ﷺ's soul was taken away by the Malik al maut by the angel of death, in the farewell pilgrimage. Allah Ta'ala revealed, for example, the words, اليوم أكملت لكم دينكم وأكملت عليكم نعمتي ورديت لكم الإسلام دينا. Today, 
I have your, completed your religion for you. On that day, a few months before the death of the Prophet wasallam, the Sharia of Islam was complete. The laws and regulations of Islam were complete as Allah testifies here. And I have completed my favor upon you. Yani Allah Ta'ala calls this deen, this religion, his favor upon you. He couldn't have done you a bigger favor than this. Yes, he can give you health, that's a favor. He can give you money, that's a favor. But all of these things will throw you into destruction without the favor of Islam. Look at how some of the misguided people use their health to disobey Allah. And how they use their money to disobey Allah. It's a destruction for them. It's a disaster for them. So Allah says, وَأَتْمَمْتُ عَلَيْكُمْ نِعْمَتِي And I have completed my favor upon you. وَرَضِيتُ لَكُمْ الْإِسْلَامَ دِينَ And I have chosen Islam for you as a religion. No other way. So my beloved brother, my respected sister, you sitting here and hearing these words know already that that is a big reason why you should be thankful to Allah Ta'ala. And then also I would like to congratulate you inshallah if we can make it a few more days that you have reached the month of Ramadan. Allah Ta'ala says, Shahu Ramadan alladhi unzila fihi al-Qur'an hudan li nasi bayinati min al-huda wal firqan This month of Ramadan, as we read in Surah Al-Baqarah, is the month in which the Qur'an was revealed. Hudan li nasi, a guidance for the people. A guidance, Allah Ta'ala didn't create us and then leave us, let, leave us alone to find out our own ways. La. He sent prophets after prophets and messengers and books to guide us, to warn us. To each and every nation a messenger was sent as we know from the Qur'an. So also in this month he says, Shah Ramadan alladhi unzila fi al-Qur'an, hudan li nasi, a guidance for mankind and clear proofs of guidance wal furqan al furqan is that thing that allah mentions he calls the quran al furqan al furqan is the clear distinction between truth and falsehood between truth and lie between darkness and light the quran so congratulations my brother for receiving this quran and being from the ummah of muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and as Allah Ta'ala closes this ayat in Surah Al-Baqarah, وَلِتُكَبِّرُوا اللَّهَ عَلَى مَا هَدَاكُمْ وَلَعَلَّكُمْ تَشْكُرُونَ And that you may glorify the greatness of Allah, for that He has guided you. For the fact that He has guided you, وَلَعَلَّكُمْ تَشْكُرُونَ And that you may be grateful, thankful. These ayat that we find in Surah Al-Baqarah, around 183, ayah 183 and 85, 185, you read it for yourself, Allah Ta'ala here is reminding us that we should be grateful and thankful to Allah Ta'ala that He has guided us and He has made us yani, uh, achieve, yani, made it up to this month. <coughs> a month in which, subhanAllah, there is a night. Congratulations, my brother, if you make it to this month in which there is a night which is better than a thousand months. Laylatul Qadr khayrun min alfi shahr. The Quran says so. Which is more than 80 years of the life of a person, which is about your whole life. Worshipping Allah in that night, as if you have worshipped Allah Ta'ala your whole life. In a month in which you will be removed 2100 years of travelling away from the fire. What's my evidence for that? The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, we find in Sahih al-Bukhari and Sahih Muslim. And always when I use a hadith in my talk, I make sure that they are authentic. Because I don't want to be a storyteller. I want to be an educator with reliable sources. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam said, مَا مِنْ عَبْدٍ يَسُومُ يَوْمًا فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ إِلَّا بَعَدَ اللَّهُ بِذَلِكَ الْيَوْمِ وَجْهَهُ عَنِ النَّارِ سَبْعِينَ خَلِيفًا He said there is not, not a single servant who fasts one day for the sake of Allah. Now look, look at the condition here. For the sake of Allah. That's the condition. Not out of tradition, not just to be a part of the group. No, for the sake of Allah. Illa ba'ad Allah or Allah, there's a, there's a promise from the Prophet. Or Allah will move his face from the fire, a distance that one travels in 70 years. 
So that's one day. So I say 30 times that is what? 2100 years after fasting the month of Ramadan. The distance that one should, what one would travel in 2100 years removed away from the fire. And all the other ahadith that we know about Ramadan. That the gates of Jahannam will be closed and the gates of Jannah will be open and the shaitans will be chained, etc. Congratulations, my brother and my sister, for reaching this month as a Muslim. Many times, of course, every year again, we hear this ahadith about how good Ramadan is, etc. And we know probably the words, and some of them are going to mention, but we probably never thought really beyond these words. For example, the coming hadith, reported by Al-Bukhari, a Muslim, in which the Prophet ﷺ said, من صام رمضان إيمانا واحتسابا غفر له ما تقدم من ذنبه. Whoever fast Ramadan out of iman, belief, and hoping for reward, everything that you know, proceeded from his sins will be forgiven. Now, what many Muslims think is, so, and we see unfortunately many of such people, throughout the year, they seem not to worship Allah. As if Allah is dead 11 months per year and all of a sudden comes to life in Ramadan. First of all, we say to such people what Abu Bakr said radiallahu anhu when the Prophet died, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. His famous speech when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam died, Abu Bakr stood up in the Masjid of Medina and he said, Man kana minkum ya'budu Muhammadan fa inna Muhammadan qad mat. Wa man kana minkum ya'budu Allah fa inna Allah hayyun la yamut. He said, whoever of you used to worship Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam, know that Muhammad has died. But whoever of you worships Allah, know that Allah is alive and will never die. And I say the same to you. Whoever of you worships Ramadan, know that Ramadan will die in 30 days. But whoever of you worships Allah, know that there is an Allah. Speaking to those people, for example, who don't perform their salah, throughout the year except in Ramadan. Don't read Quran except in Ramadan. The Prophet وسلم, doesn't say here whoever abstains from food and drink he will be forgiven. La. He gives two clear conditions here in this hadith I just read. Man sama Ramadana imanan wahtisaban out of sincere belief and hoping for reward. Now tell me is it sincere belief if you start fasting with the intention to go back to sinning after Ramadan, is that sincere belief? No, that's nifaqan, that's what they call hypocrisy. You know the sinners, when, whenever they hear Ramadan coming, they feel their heart <coughs> becoming tight because, you know, they have to give up sinning for a whole month. Whatever the sinning is, smoking weed or whatever they do, and they're already looking forward to the end of the month so they can go back to their sins. Such people will not be forgiven. The hadith proves this. Imanan, the condition is out of sincere faith. Labaik Allahumma labaik. Here I am, Ya Rabbi, for you. For your sake. Wahtisab and hoping for his reward. How can you hope for his reward if you know you're playing games with Allah? Do you think that Allah does not know what's in your heart? That's not hoping for reward. That's playing games with Allah Ta'ala. And the munafiqeen in Surah Al-Baqarah, the, hip, the hypocrites, when you read about them, that's exactly how they were. Allah describes them. Whenever they meet the Muslims, the believers, they say, we believe. You know, in Ramadan, all of a sudden, and don't get me wrong, I'm happy with the faces that show up in Ramadan that we haven't seen for the whole year. Because this is a chance to keep them in the masjid for the rest of the year. So I don't say stare at them and give, give them angry looks, nah. but there is something wrong with such people who don't show up unless it's Ramadan and then they all of a sudden they say we believe and then after Ramadan Allah Ta'ala describes the hypocrites in the Quran Then when they return to their shaitans and the ulama say it means the shaitans from among the people they say, in reality, we are with you. We were only mocking. And that's the fact. In reality, 11 months per year, they are with the shaitans. And one month per year, all of a the sudden, they say to the Muslims, we are with you. That's how Allah Ta'ala describes the hypocrites. So don't be from those 
and alhamdulillah it's still time to realize this and to repent and stay worshiping Allah after Ramadan. <coughs> so the condition is mentioned here out of sincere faith and hoping for reward. Yes, his for, foregone sins will be forgiven. That's the promise from the Prophet <coughs> Many brothers and sisters, when you would ask them, what is the reason for fasting in Ramadan? What would they tell you? What would they tell you? What do you think is the first answer that we, have, that we always hear? Anybody? It's good. It's good. No doubt it's good. Why is it good? Yes. You get closer to Allah. You get closer to Allah. Mashallah, that's a very good answer. But you know, most Muslims don't say that. You know what they say? To feel what the poor people feel. Wallahi, that's not the reason that Allah mentioned in the Quran. Allah Ta'ala says, لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ So that you may learn taqwa, that you may learn to fear Allah. And that's not the subject of this talk, but Allah Ta'ala, of course, it's halal for you to eat and drink. But just because Allah Ta'ala said, in this month from Fajr to Maghrib is haram. Unless you have a good reason. Okay? It's haram. All of a sudden you obey Allah. And when you're all alone in your house, you close the curtains, you think nobody can see you, yet still you don't eat and drink. Why? Because you know Allah can still see you. He's all knowing, all seeing, all hearing. So that's what we learn in Ramadan. Wallahi, we don't learn what the poor people feel. Once, one of my Indonesian brothers, he told me this story and it happens a lot. In the middle of Ramadan, they saw a Muslim eating a banana in daytime. And they went to him and said, Ya Akhi, fear Allah, what are you doing in front of the Muslims eating this banana? We are fasting. He's saying, Wallahi, this is the first food I found in three days. Don't tell me about fasting. That's a poor person. You have the knowledge, inshallah, no matter how your situation is here in England, it must, be, it must not be that, that bad, that you have the knowledge after Maghrib, I have a fridge, I can take the juice out, I make my soup, I have my bread ready, mashallah, I can eat. A poor person, wallah, he doesn't have this knowledge. Maybe after Maghrib, he still has to look for two hours to find a plate of white rice. Ramadan is not to feel what the poor people feel, even though, yes, I mean, a bit of it so that we may have more compassion with them. But what I want to make the point very clear here, Ramadan is not abstaining from food and drink only. And that's the mistake that most of the Muslims make. They abstain from eating and drinking while their tongues are talking lies, their tongues are backbiting and gossiping, their eyes are watching haram movies on TV, their ears are listening to haram talk, and they say, I'm fasting. Listen to what the Prophet said in Sahih al-Bukhari. Man lam yada'a qawla zuri wal amala bihi wal jahla falaysa lillahi hajatun fi yada'a ta'amah wa sharabah. This hadith is very important for us to think about. Whoever, he said, does not leave qawla zuri. Qawla zuri is any haram talk. Whether it's backbiting or lying or gossiping or uh, ridiculing and insulting other Muslims, being rude to people with your tongue. So the Prophet ﷺ said, whoever does not leave that, well, bihi, and acting accordingly, fighting and, and with the people and arguing with the people, well, jahla, and treating people in a rude way, the Prophet ﷺ said, Allah doesn't need it from him that he leaves his food and his drink. Anyway, Allah doesn't need it from you. It, it, this hadith does not mean that Allah needs your fasting. Even if you would all disobey Allah tomorrow, Allah is still Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So listen, what we want to make clear here, Allah ta'ala doesn't need your fasting. This is not what is, what is meant here. But this is a, a way in Arabic to warn somebody. Allah doesn't need it. In other words, you will have no reward at the end of the day, Akhi. You talk, all this haram talk, you act accordingly, but you abstain from food and drink, as if the Prophet is saying here, at the end of the day, all you have left is hunger and thirst, but no reward. There's a question, does it break my fast if I lie, for, for example, backbite? No, it doesn't break your fasting. What does it wash away your reward? Yes, at the end of the day, there's no reward left. And also, the Prophet wasallam, if he's saying here, Whoever doesn't leave this and acting accordingly, 
This means the whole body. It's not just your stomach that he speaks about here. Acting accordingly is with your eyes, with your tongue, with your ears, with your feet. For example, you walk to haram places, your hands do haram things. And from this hadith, for example, we know clearly that fasting is with the whole body. With the whole body, not just with your stomach. How do we fast with the whole body? And this is important to know, not only for the brothers who are fasting, for example, some of our younger brothers, younger kids, if they don't fast the whole day, or for the sisters who have their periods and they're not able to fast, they are still able to fast with the rest of their body, with their hearts, with their tongues, with their ears, and I will just point out some of these ways how. And let's start with the most important one, the heart. How can somebody fast with his heart? You know, as the ulama say, the heart is the king of the body, and your limbs are its soldiers. If you have a bad, corrupted king, an oppressor, he will make your hands and your arms and your legs and, and your tongue do evil things, right? If you have an evil king, he will tell his soldiers to loot the country and burn all the houses, right? The same thing. Your heart is like the king of your body. And this is exactly what the Prophet ﷺ said in a longer hadith in Bukhari Muslim. Allah wa inna fil jasadi mudra. I know for sure that in the body there is a piece of flesh. And then he said, Ida salahat salah al kullu. When this piece is flesh is sound, is good, is healthy, your whole body is healthy. He didn't mean here cardiovascular diseases, even though even that is true. Your heart is sick, your whole body is sick. But what he meant here is religiously and only and spiritually. When you have sickness in your heart, and I will mention a few, your whole body will become sick. You have this sick heart without iman. Your eyes will look at haram things, your tongue will speak haram talk, and you will remember Allah except but a little. So the Prophet ﷺ said, here this piece of flesh, when it's healthy, the whole body will be healthy. And when it's corrupted and sick and dirty, your whole body will be accordingly. And then he said, know that this piece of flesh is the heart. So this is something that we really have to think about, how can we fast with our hearts? And Allah Ta'ala, for example, says in the Quran, وَمَنْ يُؤْمِنْ بِاللَّهِ يَهْدِ قَلْبَهِ And whoever believes in Allah, He will guide his heart. Allah will guide his heart towards that which pleases him. He will guide his heart to Jannah. Now this sounds simple, believe in Allah. It's not meant here that you just believe in the existence of a Creator. Shall I tell you something? Shaitan, does he believe that Allah exists or not? No? Really? Who thinks, who thinks shaitan does believe that Allah exists? Faust? Shaitan believes that Allah exists. Yeah? And he even says in the Quran, Ya Rabbi, oh my Lord. Does it make him a Muslim? Is shaitan a Muslim? No, of course not. So believing in Allah does not only mean like I believe Allah exists. The Jews do that. Even the Hindus do that in their way. Yeah? But what is meant here to believe in Allah, like Abu Bakr and Umar and Uthman and Ali radiallahu anhu, like the Sahaba believed. To know what La ilaha illallah means. <coughs> to avoid all forms of shirk that the Muslims have fallen into. Believing in Allah in all his names and his attributes. Studying his beautiful names. Al-Rahman, Al-Rahim, Al-Qudus, Al-Salam, Al-Aziz, Al-Jabbar. What do they mean? And when one ponders over these and acts upon this, that's believing in Allah. What is meant in this ayah, such a person Allah will guide. And Allah Ta'ala says, قَدْ أَفْلَحَ مَنْ زَكَاهَا وَقَدْ خَابَ مَنْ دَسَاهَا About the human soul, he has succeeded who purifies it, and he has failed who instills it with corruption. So your soul, if you don't purify it, you know what's a strange thing? If somebody buys new clothes and he has he pours some coffee over it, he will look for all the things in the supermarket to clean his clothes. But you know, every sin that you commit, you get dots on your heart and spots on your heart and it becomes blackened and blackened and people don't look for ways to clean their heart. They're too occupied with how they look outwardly and they don't look at their hearts. Fasting with your heart is for example to purify it from shirk. What is shirk? 
What does Shirik mean? Pause. Sin. Sin. No doubt it's a sin, but what is what does shirik mean? Uh, no, haram. Sorry? Haram. Haram. What? Mutawa. Eh? Mutawa. Mutawa? Yes. What's mutawa? Uh, it's okay. Yeah. Shirik means to worship other gods besides Allah. And believe me, there are Muslims who say, La ilaha illallah. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah, and they do this. And I don't have to, this is not the subject today. So to purify your heart from shirk, and for the love of the people of shirk, to purify your heart from doubt about your belief, to purify your heart from riya, which is like to show off to the people. That's a disease in your heart. When you recite Quran that you wish the people, you need to praise you. When you give sadaqah in front of the people so the people can talk about you, in a way. That's showing off. <coughs> These are diseases of the heart. Envy. <coughs> Hasad. That Allah has given your brother something and you wish for your brother not to have this thing. And your eye is in it and then something happens to that brother. That's hasad. That's an evil thing in your heart. To cleanse your heart from this, from stinginess. What's stinginess? What does that mean? Miserliness. Huh? Young brothers, what does that mean? Jealous? Not jealous. Keep yes. it to yourself. Eh? To keep it to yourself. Yeah? A poor person comes and says, Achi, please, I have no food to eat. You tell him, go away. You ugly beggar. You know, some of the ulama in the past, when they heard this knock on the door at night and they saw a poor person in front of the door, you know what they said? They didn't say, mind you, go away, man, I'm reading Quran. He said, welcome to the one who has come to wash away my sins. Thanks to you, I can feed you, you wash away my sins today. You see, these are diseases of the heart. So we can fast with our hearts by having good thoughts and good intentions and love for Allah and love for the Muslims. To abstain from haram desires and ideas and filling it with gratitude towards Allah and having love for Ahl Sunnah, meaning love for the people who follow the Sunnah and a dislike for the people who promote bid'ah. And I don't have to explain every term here, mashallah, my brothers understand me. Take a warning from the words of Allah. When He says in Surah Al Baqarah about the hypocrites, again, fi qulubihim maradun fazadahum Allah marada. In their hearts is a disease. And because every time they chose for the haram, for this disease, as a punishment, فَزَادَهُمْ اللَّهُ Allah increased the disease in their hearts. So that is a punishment from Allah, that when you choose to do something haram, you go further astray, and further astray, and further astray. And on the same way, if you choose to worship Allah and obey Allah, the next step to, wor to worship and obey Allah will be easier for you. That's the, the reward from Allah. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he used to make this dua a lot. Ya muqallib al-qulub thabbit qalbi ala dinik. Say after me. Ya muqallib al-qulub thabbit qalbi ala dinik. One more time. Ya muqallib al-qulub thabbit Qalbi ala dinik. And it means, so he was making dua to Allah and he teaching us this dua. O turner of the hearts. Meaning that Allah can turn your hearts any way he wants. If he wants, he, you wake up as a Muslim and you go to bed as a non-Muslim. This happens. If he wants, you know, in the day something happens to your heart which makes you doubt the existence of Allah himself. So the Prophet said, O oh, turner of the heart, turn my heart so it will become steadfast upon your religion. So we ask Allah to make our hearts steadfast upon His religion. So that is a way to fast with the heart. And I will not go into each and every body part here because uh, I have to keep it short. Um, another way to fast is with the stomach and this is more than just abstaining from food and drink. What most people think about, yes, leaving food and drink, and of course, if you don't do so, this breaks your fast. But, how about those people 
who take all this time and energy to fast with their, with their stomach to abstain from food and drink and then at the end of the day they put food on the table which comes from haram income, from haram money. SubhanAllah, isn't that a strange thing? Brothers working in, in banks like Barclay for example with riba, they, they, they work with riba with interest and they're taking their salary from this and they're paying their hajj from this and the umrah from this and they're buying the food for this for the whole family. Or many other ways. Like those brothers in Levenzum alongside and everywhere that I speak to and some of them even become angry when I advise them in the nicest way or selling alcohol in the shops. Once I heard the Quran coming out of the shop, I go in, I see bottles of whiskey and wine. Isn't that a strange thing? So they might fast the whole day and then after Maghrib they eat food which is from haram income. And I don't say that eating dates is haram, but the money they bought it was haram, so the food becomes haram. And the Prophet ﷺ told us about a man who was on a long journey. And on a long journey he had to, to, to worship Allah. In the sake, for the sake of Allah. And his journey was so long and hard that his, his, his hair was all messed up and he was full of dust and then he stretched out his arms toward the sky. These are all ways to, to make dua. Stretch your hands toward the sky. This is the correct way. But then the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and he was saying, Oh my Lord, oh my Lord, Ya Rabbi. Okay, making dua. Listen to what the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said. While his food is haram, and his drink is haram, and his clothes are haram, and he bought from haram money, he is nourished with haram, so how can he be granted a response? You know, how can Allah respond to his dua? You're fasting, yeah, and then at the end of the day, you're not fasting with your stomach in this way. That's a weird thing. Abu Bakr al-Siddiq radiallahu anhu. Once his servant cooked some food for him, from his own money. And then Abu Bakr, you know, this servant was a new Muslim. He just converted to Islam. So Abu Bakr wanted to make sure where did this food come from. And his servant told him that before Islam I was a soothsayer, you know, predicting the, the, the future, etc. You know these, these things, which is haram, no doubt, and shirik. So he said, I was a soothsayer. The money I got from that, this, this is what I bought your food with you, Abu Bakr. So Abu Bakr al-Siddiq radiallahu anh put his finger in his throat and he vomited everything out. He said, I don't want to eat even one piece of this food. And even on Jawzi, <coughs> this great Imam, he has a book called Sayyid al-Khatir. And in this book he tells about himself that one day I ate something that was doubtful. He didn't say clearly haram as we do nowadays. He said, I had doubt about it but I ate it anyway. He said, and after that, for months, it was as if there was a veil over my heart and in my good connection between me and Allah. As some light was turned off. So, my beloved brothers and respected sisters, we should also think about fasting with our stomachs in this way. And then, inshallah, I will just uh, speak about 10 more minutes or so, so that the information does not become too much for you to remember. So, fasting with the tongue. We just saw the hadith already that the Prophet said, whoever doesn't leave this haram speech, Allah doesn't need it for him that he's fasting. <coughs> but we could also, of course, mention the many hadith about gossiping and backbiting and lying and all these things that are haram, uh, which I'm not going to do here. I'm just going to quote one or two. Allah Ta'ala says in the Quran, مَا يَلْفِذُ مِنْ قَوْلٍ إِلَّا لَدَيْهِ رَقِيبٌ عَتِيدٌ Speaking about man, there's no word that he utters except that with him is an observer prepared to record. Meaning the malaika are ready to write down every word that you speak. And this is why a very simple advice from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, a very simple advice to live by. That he said, Man kana yu'minu billahi wal yawmin akhari. Whoever believes in Allah and in the last day, let him speak good words or remain silent. Let him think before he speaks and more so in Ramadan. And more so in Ramadan. Listen to this hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And Wallahi, when I listen to the Muslims and when we speak about speaking, we also mean 
typing in words on Facebook or whatever, on your text message, on WhatsApp, watch out with your speaking. Listen to what the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said in Bukhari a Muslim, إن العبد ليتكلم بالكلمة ما يتبين فيها So he said, verily a servant, meaning every Muslim, every person, he speaks with a word, ما يتبين فيها يزل بها إلى النار أبعد بما بين المشرق والمغرب يعني a word that he does not think about, is it good or bad? He's just chatting, right? Just having fun. <laughs> that he does not think about, that will throw him into the fire further than the distance between the East and the West. Just as we say a Muslim, a person becomes a Muslim, <coughs> we say now you are a brother. We cannot see what's in your heart. Of course in the future we will judge you on your actions, but for now we accept you as a Muslim, right? Just by uttering some words. In the same way, wallahi, somebody can leave Islam just by uttering some words. Even if he prays five times a day and fasts in Ramadan. Do you believe me? There were some Sahaba. And they were fighting in Jihad with Rasulullah, alongside Rasulullah. Not against him, alongside Rasulullah. But then they were making some jokes about Rasulullah and said some very evil things. And when they were confronted with this, they, say, they said, we were only joking. We were only joking, Ya Rasulullah. Allah Ta'ala tells them, قُلْ لَا تَعْتَذِرُوا قَدْ كَفَرْتُمْ بَعْدَ إِمَانِكُمْ Say, don't look for excuses. You have become disbelievers after you believed. Watch out for your tongue, Ya Akhi. Watch out for your tongue, Ya Sister, because Wallahi, it can drag you into the fire without you even realizing it. So how do we fast with the tongue? Make your tongue wet with the remembrance of Allah. I learned the du'as that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi used because in it there is, subhanAllah, so big lessons. And the Prophet Sallallahu used to use du'as that have a lot of lessons in only one sentence, for example. Making your tongue recite the Qur'an in this month of the Qur'an, etc. I mean, each and every of these points I could give a lecture in and of itself. The last thing I will mention here is fasting with your eyes. Fasting with the eyes. As Allah Ta'ala said in Surah An-Nur, قُلْ لِلْمُؤْمِنِينَ يَغُدُّ مِنْ أَبْصَارِهِمْ وَيَحْفَظُوا فُرُوجَهُمْ Tell the believing man, tell the believing man to lower their gaze, to lower their eyes. What does that mean? <coughs> to not look at haram things. Oh, sorry. Do not look at haram things, yeah? Whenever, if you see something haram, the Muslims say, Astaghfirullah, and his eyes go down. Not like, let me check what's passing by here. Yeah? Astaghfirullah, lower your eyes, and then Allah Ta'ala connects this to Furuj, to the private parts, subhanAllah. He says there's a connection between these two. It starts, the gate opens with the eyes, and then it goes to the private parts. That's where the sin occurs, the biggest sin. Yeah. So, how strange is the <coughs> case of a believer who fasts the whole day, and then at the end of the day they turn on the TV at iftar, the time, and they watch all these these women without hijab or full of makeup and all, and all these, these series that were recorded for Ramadan, and there goes the reward. You know how happy Shaitan is. You've done your best the whole day, and then you sit down in front of your TV, and there goes your reward. He got you in the end anyway. He didn't get you when you're fasting, but he got you now in the end. My, my, my beloved brother, that is why I say, even certain channels shouldn't be on a TV of a Muslim. Or maybe it's even safer to say, nowadays, a TV should not be in our house, except with these few channels that bring us a, a benefit, like some Islamic channels. Wallahu alam. My beloved brothers and sisters, just the last point, and then inshallah I will not bother you any longer with, uh, with my face and my, my talk. Some of the, or many actually of the Muslims, they have the habit in Ramadan, of course they are awake the whole night, and then they go to bed after Fajr, and they won't wake up until Dhuhr, or maybe even after Dhuhr. And half of the day is fast. Wallahi, I used to know brothers, they only come out of the bed to pray, and go back to sleep, and then 15 minutes before Maghrib, they come out of bed. 
Ramadan was actually, in the time of the Sahaba and the ulama of this first generation, was a month of extra activity, not a month of less activity. <coughs> so, the Battle of Badr, for example, you know the Battle of Badr? Who knows the Battle of Badr? Yes? Who won? The Muslims or the, the non-Muslims? The Muslims won, yeah? <coughs> The first battle that was won by the Muslims in the year 3 after Hijra. This was in Ramadan. You know how hard it was in the Sahaba. Yani. This was in Ramadan. Fatah Mecca, when the Muslims conquered Mecca, eight years after the Hijra. Ida Jaa Nasrullahi wal Fatih. The Surah speaks about it. In the month of Ramadan. They didn't say, uh, yes, Ramadan, let me chill out you know, until the Asr and then. And many other battles in the history of Islam were fought in the month of Ramadan because they knew this is the month in which there are the blessings. So my beloved brothers and respected sisters, as we go back to the beginning of this talk that we should not fast only by abstaining from food and drink, but fast with our whole bodies. May Allah Ta'ala grant us beneficial knowledge upon which we will act sincerely for His sake so that we can do that which pleases us and it's obligatory for each and every one of you to learn the rules of fasting that I didn't speak about today. Yeah? What breaks your fast and what doesn't. Wallahu ta'ala alam. Anything I said wrong is for myself or shaitan. And Allah and His Rasul are far removed from my mistakes, which is like Allah.